officials tried to remove the wrong black man from a proceeding. Let me first take you to the video. Here it is. It is widely recognized by the vast majority of experts that bringing CRT into the K-12 classroom is just as outlandish as bringing calculus to the first grade classroom. Neither idea is viable or credible. Therefore, it is asinine to ban CRT when it isn't even taught in any K-12 classroom in the United States of America. Your continued blatant, willful ignorance of the black experience in this country is not only shameful, but also detrimental to the education and growth of our children. If I, don't, if I feel that way, why don't I get out of the country? Kelly. My family. Sir, that's your first warning. The second warning, you'll be, you'll be asked to leave. If you would like, the whole auditorium can leave. That's the way we're going to conduct. Joe, that is, Joe. We need order in the building, or I'll let everybody leave. I object to that. All right, if this ten minute woman recess. said that to him, ten minute recess. she needs to be ex excused. I'm going to explain what happened. It was actually a beautiful thing. The brother spoke truth, 100% unfiltered truth. Put up his picture full mass. California School District, a workshop on critical race theory became somewhat chaotic after a woman apparently told a black male to leave the country. And the board's president called for the man to be removed. The event came after the Temecula Valley Unified School District's governing board voted to ban something that's not taught, critical race theory. The decision in December sparked protest from students, educators, and community members. The reason it sparked protest is because they knew they were simply trying to stop teachers from being able to teach true history. Wednesday's workshop, black member of the public named Dion stood up to deliver comments expressing how deeply disappointed he was by the board's decision to bring in a panel of so-called experts on critical race theory. Dion added that CRT was not even taught in K through 12 classrooms. Now let's put up some of the members. You have Steven Schwartz. Board member told Newsweek that as Dion finished speaking and was leaving the podium, a white woman to the right, you're looking at her there, made a comment to the effect that he should get out of the country. He responded to her and the audience became angry. Let's put up the board president, Dr. Joseph Komrowski. Dr. Joe told Dion that he was being given a first warning and would be asked to leave if given a second. Once again, no words for the woman who told him to get out of the country. Board member Allison Barkley also spoke with Newsweek to say she objected to the man's removal. She could be heard saying in the video, if this woman said that to him, she needs to be excused. The woman was later asked to leave, Schwartz said. The meeting devolved into chaos and the board president declared a recess, he added. Barclay said she had asked Komrowski to also remove the woman who had made the horrible remark to the man. Meanwhile, an anti-CRT panelist 
who attended the event took to Twitter to spread misinformation about what occurred. Uh, now, this is Dr. Wu, PhD. Dr. Wu says uh, the mob just disrupted USD CRT workshop with a pro 1619 public commenter, getting extremely confrontational and the other shouting as a racist panel, shouting us as a racist panel. The two union back trustees then conveniently protested by leaving the meeting without a quorum. Link here. Additionally, a district trustee, Jen Wiersma, had recently shared this video on Instagram blaming black people for their own enslavement. All right, for their own enslavement. Let's go to the video, here it is. I had the chance to go to the district office and participate in a focus group on critical race theory with Chris Aaron leading the discussion. He went through the academia of it, the roots, the history, and then how it's applicable to our classroom. Interestingly, there was someone there who clearly had the opinion that it is a-okay to be in a class where, for example, white students feel the shame of their patriarchy. She pretty much argued for the fact that because of our historical past, they should be made to feel uncomfortable, feel some of that guilt. I find that disingenuous and a flawed way of thinking because this is the thing. If you look at all of history, every skin color has both been a slave and owned a slave. Black slave traders actually sold their people and trafficking still goes on today. It's all wrong on every level. Now, I am all for discussions that aren't censored. However, it is important for our students in a classroom to not feel like they're the oppressed or the oppressor. That is dividing within an ideology that does not educate. So let's talk about true history, but then let's talk about how important it is to develop one's character moving forward, appreciating other people's ethnicities and realizing here in America in, in the last 50 years, we have made great strides in breaking through issues of racism. I would um, love to have you, madam, on the bullpen. So let's go ahead and get that invitation out today. I got some education for you, if you're up for it. All right, obviously, uh, once again, uh, CRT, not taught in K through 12 education. Very simple, very simple statement, okay, not taught. I thought he made a great analogy. I've actually made a similar analogy before. To say CRT is the same as teaching that slavery is real, that slavery existed, that the KKK was an oppressive racist organization. To say it's the same is like saying math and calculus are the exact same thing. Critical race theory is an advanced theoretical construct meant for advanced level collegiate studies. I did not learn. Critical race theory until probably 2016. So the dynamic of, well, we are going to stop this CRT move doesn't exist. What are they stopping? They want control over teachers teaching one element of history. They don't want teachers teaching the truth about racism in America, how it started, how it continued, and how it permeates today. Those are the things they don't want. Now, you have to ask yourself why. This is not simply about them feeling guilty because they don't. The mere fact that they support legislation in order to limit a teacher's ability to teach shows you this is not about guilt. This is about comfort. They don't want to feel uncomfortable. That's it, they don't want to feel uncomfortable. And there's another dynamic involved. You see, children are the future problem solvers of any nation, of any nation. And when they solve or resolve or remedy a problem, they must also find who was the catalyst or originator of that problem. The children today are in a position to judge the adults of today as well. And so the adults of today, like Governor Ron DeSatan, they are hell bent on creating a system that makes a child believe no problem ever existed. This is not about saving children, this is about saving themselves. All right, Ben, thoughts here. <laughs> I, 
I mean, I still think that we should ban something that doesn't exist in a context where it doesn't happen. Sure, they don't teach CRT K through 12, but we should ban it. And you make the great point that the real truth is about keeping white people from feeling uncomfortable. And they always, when they go on these rants, they miss the very important, very obvious point that that is the whole point. Yeah. Is to make white people feel uncomfortable. Why? Just to punish them out of the clear blue sky? No, because black people feel uncomfortable. Mm. Many days, most days, sometimes every day, existing in this country that has not yet righted the wrongs, it has not yet made amends and fully understood our racist past and the racism that still exists today. So, one of the only ways you can start to unravel that is by some discomfort for white people so they can start understanding. Wow, this is what it must be like. That's what it takes in life to start understanding is when you have some sort of personal experience to understand it. Like a, a, a kind of a weird example, but just the last few years when there's been a big push for diversity in Hollywood and for casting that isn't always putting white straight males first, it has started to affect me and any of my white fr white male friends getting as much work and as many callbacks, as many opportunities as we used to. Is that uncomfortable for us? Yes. Does that kind of suck for us? Yes. But would I want that to change? No, because it's totally reasonable and fair. And it's about time that the opportunities get spread around. And the uncomfortability that I feel being like, wow, so that's what it's like. Mm. Just not having opportunities thrown at your feet constantly. That must be what it's been like. So maybe we should continue trying to make that fair for everybody. Very well said, knowledge is a good teacher, experience is the ultimate teacher. Having an actual experiential dynamic connected to the lesson provides a more fuller context.